Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we begin this evening, if we could take a moment of silence to remember the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Thank you. So this evening, as we start, we do have a new alder person that will be sworn in this evening. And typically, I'm not sure where you're going to do it, Debbie. Right in front. Do it in front. Do you want to do it in front? Yep. Yeah. Camera, camera's on. Camera's on. Camera's on. Camera's on. Camera's on. Do it this way. Got to be on camera right away. <laughs> Did you meet our hair and makeup person? <laughs> <laughs> we did it all. There you go. Yeah, they did. So, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Ann Schmidt. I, Ann Schmidt. Having been appointed to the position of District 5 Alderman. Having been appointed to the position of District 5 Alderman. Of the City of Menasha, Winnebago, and Calumet Counties. Of the City of Menasha, Winnebago County, and Calumet Counties. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin and will faithfully and impartially and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of aldermen discharge the duties of aldermen to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God thank you thank you Now, if we could have the role that we have officially have eight aldermen again. <laughs> Alderman Taylor. Here. Alderman Sevenick. Here. Alderman Langdon. Here. Alderman Schmidt. Here. Alderman Tom Grady. Here. Alderman Ted Grady. Here. Alderman Rapella. Here. Alderman Nichols. Here. The first item on the agenda this evening are two public hearings. We have a rezoning at 1530 Oneida Street from community business to general commercial district. Uh, Director Schrader, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, the only thing I'll add is, uh, so this is uh, the property just north of the former B.J. Clancy's property that was attached last fall to the city of Menasha. Um, at, by state statute, uh, an ordinance or a, a property that is detached from one municipality and attached to another municipality maintains that same zoning district as a previous municipality until such a time that a zoning district was designated. So again, this is more of a cleanup uh, to designate it this as, um, as the same as the adjoining properties, um, the uh, two to the south, B.J. Clancy's, um, from the former Village of Fox Crossing zoning district of B2 to C1. So with that, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on the proposed rezoning this evening? Go ahead. There you go. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Andy Berg with Kimley Horn. I'm a civil consultant uh, for Casey's, and I'll be here and be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. So seeing no one else for that public hearing, we'll close that one, call that one to a close. And item two is a special use permit on the same group of properties. Director Schrader? Yeah, so combined uh, um, with, with the rezoning as well as some other items on the agenda tonight, including the, in the consent agenda, a CSM to combine three properties into one property. So that would include the BJ Clancy property, the vacant property to the north, and the, um, and the uh, property to the west, which currently has some parking lot and a garage attached to it. Um, so part of this uh, is to combine all those three properties into one property um, and actually uh, 
reconstruct or, or demolish the former restaurant and uh, construct a new Casey's General Store at that facility. Uh, it's uh, basically what is presented, um, again, is a Casey's gas station, uh, roughly uh, just under 4,000 square feet of commercial space, and then five uh, double-sided pumps, so 10 total pumps um, on that facility, uh, and then included with the, uh, the overall site is just the parking, uh, traffic circulation, um, lighting, landscaping, things of that nature. There is a uh, large landscape buffer on the north and west side of the proposed property to add to a, a screening buffer for those residential properties. Um, I will leave it at that. Uh, the plan commission did review both of the, or all four of these items, uh, the rezoning CSM, special use permit, and site plan, and did recommend approval. So with that, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on the special use permit this evening? Seeing no one, we'll call that public hearing also to a close. And we'll move on to the report of department heads, staff, and consultants. And Director Tungate is here this evening to talk about the city's comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to take a moment to uh, uh, introduce Trish Naw. She's with the East Central Regional Planning Commission. Uh, she uh, played an instrumental part in putting this uh, comprehensive outdoor recreation plan together. And I just want to kind of talk about the, the I guess, the outline for tonight. Uh, there's a lot of information there. We, we know that. There's like 88 pages there or so. But uh, so this process started uh, over a year ago, well over a year ago. And uh, the plan has gone through a lot of uh, formatting changes and so forth. Um, and to kind of watch the, the, the clock a little bit tonight, we're going we're gonna to be going through this thing fairly quickly. Uh, and the, I would like to point out that the chapters we'll probably spend the most time on are 2, 4, and 6. Uh, 2 is the goals and objectives. Uh, 4 is sort of the trends in, in outdoor recreation. Uh, and six is, are the recommendations. Uh, I think it's important to note that we had a lot of public input uh, in this process. Uh, we, we went out, we had a public survey, we had an online survey, we had a, a written uh, part of that survey as well. Uh, we held a couple of workshops uh, last spring where the public was invited to come in. So this isn't, you know, just Brian in his office coming up with a bunch of ideas and throwing in a plan. We, re we really wanted to uh, uh, make this the people's plan, and I, th I think we, we did that. And so uh, we will entertain, I think, some questions along the way. We probably could spend you know, all night going through this document if we wanted to, but uh, I think if we, we can handle it, I think a few questions along the way. And uh, Trish has done a lot of these plans uh, for Winnebago County, a lot of townships. So. Uh, uh, she's very experienced in, in writing these plans, uh, and we're, it's, we're, we're, we're happy that we now have a more comprehensive plan. I think the one we had uh, previous was, uh, you know, a little, little small and, and undetailed, but now we're really, uh, I think, have a, a much more comprehensive plan. So with that, I guess, Trish, I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, Mayor Alderman. Um, so again, Brian uh, basically had told you the, the corp that we had put together. Um, again, it did take a little bit longer of a process, but I think you will find that the plan is um, a lot of detail. Um, and that was kind of one of our goals to actually do that. So really what I want to do is just highlight, kind of go chapter by chapter with each of the, um, with the document itself. And you guys can stop me, just ask a quick question or something like that, but um, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. I'll, like Brian said, I'll highlight this um, a little bit. So uh, if you want to hit to chapter one possibly here, um, again, we started the process probably early in 2019. Um, it took a little bit longer, but again, it's a comprehensive plan. Um, the reason why you really have to do these plans are to be eligible for grants. So every five years, um, a city or community or municipality should have a corp or a comprehensive outdoor recreation plan in place. And that is not just for DNR grants, but it's for health grants, it's for any other kind of funding sources that you would have. Um, and it's, it's definitely good if you have the rankings for them. Um, and if the project is actually listed in the corp, you actually have a better chance of getting that project and that money from the corp itself. So again, um, 
this is a vision for the future. This plan is not governed by state statutes. Um, there's cost estimates that you will see in here. Uh, we're not approving any cost or, or prices or anything like that. It's just a guide um, for a vision for the, for the city for the future. Um, so, you know, if you look at chapter one, we, kind of, we develop four phases. Um, looking at phase one, where are you guys? So we're looking at where, are you, where is the city right now? Then we're gonna look at where is the future? Where does the city really wanna go? So you see the four phases. Um, and then chapter six is really how do you want to get there besides chapter two? What are the goals and specific objectives um, that you're going to have? Um, this whole project came about through our East Central Technical Assistance Program. So each year we will send out and um, because Winnebago County is a member, City of Menasha falls underneath that. And that's really how this plan came about. Um, it was through Brian requesting our services uh, to complete the plan itself. So just kind of wanted to throw that in there for a little bit. Um, we can kind of move into chapter two, which will really tell you where do you want to be. So what we ended up doing through uh, the park board, we sat down, um, we did an exercise. We went through a bunch of goals. We did the SMART goal um, access. So SMART. S, specific, um, are your goals measurable? Are they achievable? Are they realistic? Are they timely? So using that, hopefully we were smart enough to actually get the goals and objectives that the, that the city actually really needed. Um, if you look on page, I think it's 2-2. Two -two. Just highlight a few of those things. Might be able to see here. But, there are six SMART goals that we'll end up having to look at. So you have the health and fitness, variety of activities, conservation, accessibility and design, partnerships, and then is it cost effective? Can we actually go through that? So each one of the goals that you see listed are prioritized by objectives, meeting one of those SMART goals. So goal one, for instance, um, provide health and fitness. Um, open spaces and trails. We want to get that system going. Um, you know, what are the trail projects out there? So that one was basically based on trails. Goal two was, what are your facilities? What do you have out there to offer residents and users? So it's a variety. Um, people want to see a pool. People want to see trails out there. They want to have playgrounds. They want to have picnic areas. Um, you have water, um, so there's water uh, based activities besides, and seasonal, so we can't forget winter around here. And sometimes that's the case too, because you want to have sledding hills and different things like that. Goal three is your conservation. So you do have a lot of um, habitat restoration, you have the water, um, you have the tree canopy that's out there, you have the Menasha conser uh, Conservator, can um, Conservancy, why can't I say that word? Conservancy out there, um, stormwater requirements, everything that would fall under there, besides the Lawson Canal, um, which actually would be a very good thing for the city to um, you know, look at and redevelop that whole area. Uh, goal number four really pertains to your ADA compliancy. Um, you wanna make sure that you are accessible to all um, when looking at any new facilities, so that would fall again under Title III. Um, so you'd want to have handicap accessibility, uh, your access to your playgrounds, any sidewalks, that kind of thing. And if you flip again, goal number five is your partnerships. Um, wherever possible, you really do want to maintain those working relationships with either Greenways, um, your Menasha School District can actually assist with that, and even your neighbors. Um, you know, that are really into those clubs um, and different variety of, of activities out there. And then number six probably is, the, is one of the important things, where's the funding? So you do want to have um, what's feasible, what is cost effective, what are my needs, what are the people's needs, you know, and kind of look at all that. So goal, you know, all those goals come into play with those six SMART goals that we developed. Table 2-2 gives you a little bit of the rankings that the park board um, went through and we developed, uh, looking at the comments and everything else as far as how they rated them. 
uh, variety of activities was actually rated the highest. So you want to make sure that you're you know, providing your user base out there. Um, but really, all of them, all of them are very important, I think, in building what you need to have as far as a park system goes. Okay, um, recreational resources, number three. Uh, we're, this is really, what do you guys have out there? What do you have to offer? What does the city really, um, you know, have as far as recreational re resources and facilities? And to tell you, you really have a lot. Um, you know, I, when I was starting to do this plan, I didn't realize there was over 235 acres of public parks and open space available in a city. I mean, that's incredible, you know, for, for what you guys have and what you have to actually maintain and take care of. Um, you know, Jefferson Park being one of the bigger ones, that's the one that actually gets the most used. Um, Smith Park in there, um, you know, you have a variety, again, variety, good goal. Community parks, um, you start looking at all your neighborhood parks that come into play, uh, Paslo, uh, Clovis Grove, Hart, Pleasance, Shepherd, uh, Barker Farm, all of these, the, hidden, the new one, the Hidden Pond Park. I mean, all of these are actually very, very good parks. Um, the mini parks even that are, are, you know, just kind of a niche that's actually just kind of little tucked away little areas that people can go and play. Those are important. Um, you know, you, you are serving those neighborhoods, you know, regardless of that size. Um, you know, a half acre, so what? You know, they're there. Um, you need that. Uh, the special use, you're looking at your memorial building, you got the uh, Bridge Tower Museum, Municipal Beach, um, you got the plazas now, you got the Mill Street Terminus, I mean, you got the Riverwalk, so there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in this city. Uh, you know, the pool, for, for, you know, what it's worth, that is, you know, probably a very useful, high-priority item. Um, and then you're starting to look at the trails. Uh, the trails are really kind of your, your routes. Um, it guides the system. It, it really connects everything together, and that's exactly what you want in your park system. So, you know, the boat launches and everything else that kind of just tie that all in together along with the natural areas. Along with those, you have the schools, you have the, the lock site, you do have uh, Hecarat that's sitting here in the city. Um, you do have intertwined of village of Fox Crossing also. So there's a, there's a lot going on within the city boundaries. All right, we'll get into chapter four. Did anybody have any quick questions? I went through those a little bit fast, but it was pretty, I think, straightforward. Um, for recreational needs, we look at um, usually a standard. And that's just a guide, guideline. Um, 10 acres for every 1,000 residents is usually what we use for a typical city of this size. Um, it's not to say that you could use 9.5. I think national standards are a little bit lower than that, but this just gives us a good barometer as far as where does Menasha fit in the scope of population density. So trying to look through chapter four, um, a lot of population projection, there's a lot of numbers. Um, really the highlight is, on, is table 4-3 on page 4-3. And you're looking at more of how many acres are you providing now and then in the future. So if you look at maybe even say the year 2020, which is a projection, um, you know, you're still at a surplus of 53 acres. And these are just the parks that the city maintains. That's not to say anything else that's actually within the boundaries that others are using. So by the year 2040, you're still within over 40 acres. So there's plenty of land mass out there. So your, your land needs are definitely met. You start looking at your locational needs. Um, you guys just added a new park, the Hidden Pond Park over there on the far east side. That was definitely needed. You have the neighborhood over there that are now utilizing another park space. So really where you're Barriers are with the, the highways, the river, everything else. You guys are very well distributed with parks and open space as far as service areas and what you're utilizing. Um, looking at your facility needs, 
Um, you know, there's a good variety. You have biking, you have walking, you have kayaking. So you have all these active sports, but you also have the passive. So you can sit by the river, you can enjoy nature, you have the conservancy out there. So there's a lot of, lot of things that are going on with the Trestle Trail, the Loop the Lake, everything else that's going in there. Um, when looking at your age distribution, your servicing, you know, the highest is actually your 25 to 44 year olds. Um, so a lot of times when you're planning those facilities, you want to think, okay, well, what is my population distribution by age group? Who do I really want to serve right now? But that always can change, so you do want to be flexible in what you have out there as far as the facility base. So that's really what that's telling you too. So, you know, you can plan now, but you can also plan in for the future for even multi-use type things. So really this chapter kind of gets more into the level of service. Um, when you start looking through it, um, it gives you a little bit more of, okay, well, my community parks are servicing, you know, 70% of my, my city, my user base. Um, the neighborhood parks are serving, you know, 30%. You look at the mini parks, okay, 12 to 13%. But again, you're only looking at that buffer zone around what that park is doing, and that's exactly really what you want. So nature areas, um, you know, a little bit more. Um, same thing with your special facilities and different things that you have out there. Um, one other thing we want to highlight is on, on page 4-8 is how are you compared to the Wisconsin trends, the SCORP, which they call the State Outdoor Recreation Plan just uh, got released in 2019. Uh, they're the top five state trends are actually bird wildlife watching from home. So I guess deer feeders and everything else that are out there are working. Uh, picnicking, tailgating, and cookouts. So I guess the Packers got something to do with the tailgate. I don't know about last night, but I guess we're okay with that. Uh, visiting a nature center, hiking and walking, running on trails, and visiting a beach. So. Those were the top five. I mean, if you kind of look at it, all of those could really fit in with what the city is offering too. So it's pretty interesting when you're starting to look at the state trends and how that compares and funnels down to municipalities. Okay, let's just kind of scroll through here. There are some maps there just for reference, a lot of them. We can go into uh, the health needs assessment. Um, again, this chapter is really not um, something that the DNR requires. I like to throw in a health needs assessment chapter because there's other grants out there. And besides, I think it's a good barometer to look at how health feeds into that planning. I mean, parks and facilities are health-based. You have that active um, opportunity out there to, that you're offering your residents and your users. So I took um, what the city already have, basically the health plan through the Fox Cities physically, or the physical health, the Fox Cities Community Health Survey, and just pulled a bunch of statistics that we had um, sitting there. So again, um, we want to increase activity level. Um, you know, obesity, all that kind of stuff really ties in with any of your other health barometers. Um, the age groups, the 18 to 34 year olds, a lot of them said exercise is boring, it's not enjoyable. Well. Um, you know, the parks out there, adding that variety, um, which is part of the goal of the, of the whole park plan, will hopefully increase that health um, activity base. And if you provide that opportunity, it's, if you build it, they will come. So that's basically really what it, what it entails. Um, just to highlight a few things through that chapter, there's a lot of information on the county health graphics. Winnebago is pretty much right in the middle. I pulled our region as far as what East Central serves. So yeah, there's still room for improvement on that, but I think we're working towards um, better health and within the county itself. And how does that really relate to uh, parks? You can look on page 5-5, um, increase exercise, it increases the kind of exercise that you're gonna have, it can reduce stress, so parks basically tie this all together. You know, what's aesthetically pleasing out there? Can you sit by the river? Um, you know, reduce that stress overall. What is your variety? You've got your skate parks, basketball, tennis courts, uh, your fitness zones. Um, that's another thing that, you know, we can kind of look at as far as a new variety out there. 
and then your programming. So there's a lot of programming and activities um, either with uh, you know the seniors, the youth groups, everything else that you have going on. So is there any questions? Well, I'm kind of losing through this. We get to the big chapter. <laughs> chapter six is really what the plan is. This is your recommendations. So this is really where you're tying all of those goals, the specific details and objectives together. So if we look at what you already have in your capital improvement plan um, over the next five years, as far as the recommendations and even from public survey, the six that you see on that page is swimming pool, Jefferson Park, the trail system, the river park over here on you know, the old Gilbert site. We got the marina across the street here and the memorial building. Those were really the six top that we looked at as far as what the city really should um, be, I guess, updating, or you know, as far as what the public really wants. So it's not, again, just Brian getting the plan done and you know myself. Um, I don't live in the city of Menasha, I live in Nina. But the thing is, when I come to a city, I'm on a neutral zone, I wanna see these things too. So um, it's just somebody you know, coming in from an outside user base. So we look at you know, placemaking. You know, how do you wanna create these places that are public so that you can bring tourism to Menasha? And people are gonna say, that's a cool city. I wanna live there. I, I like this stuff. You know, there's a pool here. There's you know, all of these opportunities that I can do with my family. I can walk on the trails. I can do all that. So again, you look at what placemaking really is. Um, you know, building that, um, build your community around those activities. What are those places? What is, what is the neighborhood? What is the heart of the city of Menasha? So you start looking at that social identity, that you know, physical and cultural resource that you actually have out there. So again, most of the recommendations are highlighted you know, according to that. So Jefferson Park, you guys just did a master plan. So a lot of the phases there are now starting, which is a really good thing because I think if you look at the survey, it's the most highly used park in the city. It's one of the favorite parks that surveyor users actually put on the survey itself. And that's within the Fox Cities. That's just not in the city of Menasha. That was the Fox Cities. So that's a very, thing, it's a very good thing to be proud of. You have the water there. You have the lake, you have rivers. I mean, you guys have so much more than a lot of other cities that I've worked on, and they would probably be drooling over what you, know, what you guys have. And again, that's your place on the water. So that's, a, that's an awesome thing to actually be proud of. Uh, the Smith Park, you know, Memorial Park, Memorial Building, um, you know, there's a lot of wear and tear on that. But there's so much opportunity for upgrades when you start thinking of the historical reference. Um, Castle Park, that gets used quite a bit too. You got, you know, the ball games out there. You got the youth groups utilizing that. Um, so you want to actually update those dugouts, that ball field, um, adding in those extra playgrounds, having it as that family park. And I used to live actually right over by Castle Park, and I used to utilize that park quite a bit. So um, it's one of my favorites. Uh, Clovis Grove, uh, you'll probably want to work with the schools on that. We kind of put in some new playground equipment. Um, Hart Park, a little bit more of the ADA accessibility. That one is pretty wide open. Well, I think a lot has been done with that skate park. I do like the artist, the artic work, the artistic work, I should say. I can't even talk anymore. Um, you know, and then you kind of get into some of those uh, mini parks that are out there. So again, you know, just some minor upgrades I think would, would spur a little bit of interest, um, even just some quick landscaping with some of those things. Uh, Shepherd Park, which is mostly like the gateway um, to the Loop the Lake, is actually getting used and utilized a little bit more. Um, you have Barker Farm. Um, so, you know, again, you have, you know, parks basically scattered all over the place and a lot of variety that you're offering your residents. Um, so you can kind of go through a lot of these. Um, Municipal Beach, you could really, I think, make that a really nice place. I've gone there many times on my lunch break and just sit by the water. It's just really relaxing, but it could use some little, you know, touches here and there, like the bathroom, 
maybe you know updating that playground equipment. Um, so there's there's just some little highlights as far as what we did, looking at some of the recommendations in there, adding some trails to the conservancy, um, adding maybe a small restroom over there, looking at James Island. Um, you know, again, this is more of you know, a bird sanctuary, but a lot of kayakers will actually go around the island. So um, it does have a lot of historical reference uh, when you start looking at this area. So again, you got on page six, seven, I don't want to go too much through all this, but you have a lot of, you know, dead end streets or street ends with water access. Might as well utilize them. Put in those little seating areas, put in some vegetation, um, you know, really update that city look. Um, beautification, that's really what it comes down to, and then the parks are a lot of what that can entail and what that can offer. Um, so a lot of boat launches, um, you know, as you start looking at that, they get used quite a bit. Um, you do have the marina there that we can utilize some, maybe some letter, uh, better lighting system, uh, replacing the chain link fence, um, you know, just some, a lot of just little maintenance type things. Um, but once you get down to water street reconstruction, I think that's where you're going to find a little bit more of how can we urbanize that part of it. We already got Loop the Lake. How can we now take that Loop the Lake trail from Water Street, bring them downtown? There's a lot of things to do when you get downtown. So, you know, you want to create that system. And I think that is a big key as far as that missing link that will get done. Um, art display, mini golf, um, there's a lot of things that I think can be done along that area. And that kind of leads us into the trails, um, the parkway. So again, you have not just land trails, but you also have water trails. We've worked with the Heritage Parkway on quite a few things out there, adding in those kayak canoe launches. Um, you want to make sure that the, some of them are ADA accessible so that everybody does have access to them. Um, the South Shore River Park, right behind my office, I look at it every single day. <laughs> but it's awesome because we'll have walking meetings out there. And it's something that you need to utilize. Um, and it's, it, I see people down there fishing constantly. Um, so, and even restoring um, that canal. Um, now that the TIF district, the Gilbert Mill and all that stuff is gone, I think it's a great location. It gets used a lot. Um, start looking at the Friendship Trail, looking at possibly extending that out even on the east side over there. Uh, loop the Little Lake again. But many, many trails and routes that are actually really, you know, that make the city great. Um, even, the, you know, the new Providence Trail that just went in. I mean, that's an awesome trail that now you can utilize and go from one end over to the other. Um, looking on page 611, just kind of browsing through some of this stuff. Again, um, economic diversity, looking at your beautification. You know, how can you bring those people again downtown? How can you make downtown a great place to be? And why would people want to come down there? While they're shopping, you've got great restaurants. I mean, there's just a multitude of things now going on in Menasha. So um, bringing that emerald trail that whole system together I think is great. Um, looking at pages 6 to 12 really just kind of gives you what the public wanted. Um, going through some of that data, I'm not going to go through all of it, but trails, aquatics, events, those were the highest. Um, so pool, splash pad, you know, aquatics was actually a pretty big, big topic when we were looking at the public informational um, meeting and just having that input from the survey itself. Um, so again, utilizing the trails, the pool, the parks, all that just kind of fit in together. Um, but there's a lot of data that really went into this, a lot of work. Uh, but it does give you a really good, I think, picture as far as what you need to do. Um, make the park safer, beautification, pet friendly, uh, better tree maintenance, upgrade the pool. I mean, these were just the commonalities of everything that we got into the survey itself. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> Promise. It's a big document. Chapter 7 basically just highlights the recommendations that what you had in there. So that's your future planning. Um, it just really gets down to really what your other thoughts and ideas could be. 
um, you know, looking at their, you're utilizing that master planning process that you did for Jefferson, looking at the pool reconstruction, maintenance, you know, redoing some of that, the tennis courts that are out there. So a lot of it's just really um, maintenance and, and upgrades, um, which is really what it is. Uh, facilities out there, you know, adding some of the newer things to them um, will actually bring that all together even highlighting your linear uh, recreational trail system, which is um, something that I think is a highlight of what it is. So getting that emerald necklace together, um, putting those parts and jewels and everything else, getting those all connected with your trails. And then you have your CIP and pretty much the appendices. So uh, relevance of possible park improvements are really on page 7.5 gives you really what's highly relevant, your accessibility, your beautification, Jefferson Park, you need to get some marketing out there, pools, playgrounds, safety in the parks are the highest as far as the relevance on that end of things. And that's really it. Um, you have grants and funding opportunities that I usually like to list in the back. Um, so there's a lot of different information out there as far as how some of these things can be funded. It doesn't always have to come out of the general fund or bond. Um, so there's other things that are out there. Uh, the Safe Routes to Parks Audits, which is another program through the National Parks and Rec Association. When I went out and did all your inventory on the parks, um, I actually did a quick survey of the safety aspects of it. And that's that back table that you'll see as far as how do you get to the park safely? So again, that's what, along the lines of Safe Routes to School, uh, which we run in our office too as a big program. And then Brian just, we decided, well, let's just have the whole capital improvement project plan in the back, which is your Appendix C. And that's your comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. So, a lot of information, short time, went through it. Is there any questions? <laughs> Someone has to have a question for Trish. Any Trisha. highlights? Here's why you're not getting any questions. That's We've been dealing with this for mm -hmm. a very long time. A lot mm -hmm. of us are very familiar with, mm -hmm. with every aspect of the situations that you brought up. Yep. I mean, thank you for putting mm -hmm. this together. It's, it's understandable that we need this, especially if we're going to start seeking funding. Yep. Um, this is a... A, a nice thing to have um, it works for us then but uh, each of us in our own districts and that we know the needs of our parks and stuff like that so it's mm -hmm. no disrespect to you or anything no, like that no, it's just not at all. when I was reading this I'm like yep yep <laughs> yep so yeah and again you. it's just a plan it's a vision you know you are definitely I would say well aware of what's going on but at least then you have the tool to go after some funding if you need it. And obviously, mm -hmm. because it's in the plan, doesn't necessarily mean either that we have to agree to Correct. all of these things. No, and not at a, all. There's kind of a feeling out there that mm -hmm. that's what it's saying, but no. it, it's a it's mm -hmm. a guideline. Exactly. Or yeah. Guide, you don't say. need to go and spend every single. You don't have to actually accept every single recommendation that's within the plan. It's there to guide you later on. And when you do make that decision, or if that decision actually is made, at least it's there. And it's basically just a reference for you. Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, excellent plan. Thank you. Uh, working for East Central uh, Wisconsin, uh, is there uh, kind of a blueprint or some sort of a helpful booklet or something on to get multiple grants, you know, mm -hmm. if it's uh, public works or if it's park or health or what's mm -hmm. your feelings on that? Yeah, and I think that's something that we're, we're trying to work for um, as far as putting together um, probably a grant guide or a funding guide. And that's really where that Appendix uh, B is coming after. Um, it's a matter of each community is pretty different, too. So, you know, we, we pretty much take the approach that DNR stewardship funding kind of guides what we have to put in here, because the DNR has guidelines within the comprehensive plan itself. 
but that's not to say that there's other health grants and different things that could go into a fact sheet and then utilize that as a checklist. Is are you what aware, you're uh, since you're a state agency, mm -hmm. um, are you aware of any type of uh, training programs or programs with the grant process or uh, I think the DNR, I know they, they have helpful things that are online that tells you how to write the grant itself, you know, what are the rankings, how you should actually put some of these things together. Um, but as far as probably a universal guide, there probably isn't okay. because each grant is going to be a little bit different. Um, again, you're going to look at ranking points. Um, you know, if you have a core bouquet, that's five, you know, five points. If the project's water-based, you get another five points, that type of thing. What about the federal grants? Are those pretty much tied in with kind of dovetail to state grants and they kind of carry along with that? Or are they completely Sometimes. It's a lot more, I think, federal highway that we deal with. Um, and it's more based on the trails itself. Uh, you got the transportation alternative uh, program that's out there or the TAP grants. Um, Governor Evers, I believe, just put together, I think, gosh, I want to even say, can't even think of how much money it was, but he just approved so much more money for the multimodal uh, grants that are out there too, and that's that's actually state based. That's there, so that one should be coming up pretty soon. I know some of our communities have actually looked at applying for that. Okay. Is there any other type of vehicles? We all know the private and um, public. Um, is there any other type of? Uh, if you have, I would say a five hundred one c three, you do have more opportunity out there. So if you're working with, say, the school district or you're working with, um, say, a recreational club and the city kind of goes along their lines or, you know, maybe be the grantee of that, you do have more opportunity with a 501c3. Okay. Yeah. Again, uh, very nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Thank you for coming out tonight, yep. Trish, and thank, thank you, you for all your work in, on the project. It's mm -hmm. been a lot of interesting discussions over the past year. We have, so. <laughs> but I think you guys got a very good document, and I think hopefully that will guide you into the future a little bit more. So again, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you want to add anything, Brian? Or? No. 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 Do you want to approve? Do they get a, do you guys need approval tonight? Uh, there is a resolution. There are there is a resolution later on in the agenda. So an hour into our meeting, we are on item two. <laughs> we, we do have the minutes and communications this evening. Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for us to receive <coughs> minutes A through G and communications H through M. It's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Item G is public comments on any matter of concern to the city. Is there anyone who wishes to make a comment this evening? Seeing no one, we'll move on to the consent agenda. There are 11 items this evening. Does anyone wish to have any of those items separated? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. I'd like items uh, from the administration committee uh, to be separated and the items from the Board of Public Works to be separated. Alderman Nichols. Items 7 and 9, please. Any others? So the items that are remaining are the minutes from the Common Council from January 6th, the changing the city attorney position to include the human resource director, the plan commission recommendations from January 7th to recommend the special use permit for several parcels along Midway Road and Oneida Street, the proposed Casey's development and the certified survey map for the same area. Does anyone wish to make a motion for those items? Alderman Seven. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve one, the common council minutes of one 6 2020 um, item 8 changing the city attorney's position to include the human resource director and 
um, the Planning Commission recommendations for the special use permit and the certified survey map with the conditions. Is there a sec There's a motion and a second by Alderman Tom Grady. And if we could have a roll call vote, please. Apparently you're vacant, Ann. <laughs> no, you're vacant up on the screen. <laughs> motion carried on roll call eight zero. Do we have a motion for item two? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move for the acceptance of the quote from Great American Insurance Company for the underground storage tank insurance in the amount of $10,943.75. So a motion and a second by Alderman Ted Grady. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. As long as you didn't vote Debbie, I think I we're didn't. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Motion carried on roll call 8 0. Do we have a motion for item 3? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make the motion to accept the payment for the Advanced Construction, Inc. contract unit number 2019-07 for the province terrace pond modifications in the amount of $196,499.68, payment number one. Second. So motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Let's see if the clerk gets to vote this time. No. <laughs> motion carried on roll call eight zero. Do we have a motion for item four? Alderman Langdon. Thank you, Mayor. Um before I make the motion, I'd like to uh Director Corey, we had uh the the uh, a little bit of miss numbers uh last time. So what he did is he put in the right numbers for this payment um in our packets and to let the audience out there know also. So with that, I will make the motion to accept the payment to MCC Inc. contract unit number 2019-04 for the new street construction and reconstruction. That's for various locations in the amount of 52,813 and 45 cents payment number three. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Alderman Langdon. Oh, go ahead if you'd like to make the motion for item five. All right, thank you, Mayor. I'll make the motion for number five for the change order to accept accept the change order for Summers Construction Contract Unit Number Two Zero One Nine Dash Zero One for New Street Construction. And that's for the concrete payment with Integral uh, Grail Curb and contra Concrete curb and gutter, an asphaltic uh, concrete pavement, and concrete sidewalk. And, that, and that's an ad addition of $8,730.65, change number one and final. 
There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Hmm. Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Do we have a motion for item 6? Thank you, Mayor. Make the motion to accept the payment to Summers Construction Contract Unit Number 2019-01. That's for new street construction, concrete payment with integral curb, concrete curb and gutter, and asphaltic concrete payment and concrete sidewalk. And that is in the amount of $8,730.65, and that is payment number seven and final. It's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Becky, your stint. Uh oh, there it goes. <laughs> Motion carried on roll call 8 0. Alderman Grady. Oh, I thought we were going to number seven. Can we I? are. Okay. I thought Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to make the motion then for the change of administrative service director to direct to finance director and place at grade two on the non representative salary range. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. The Administrative Services Director position was created in 2013 using a very transparent process. The qualifications, the job description, and the salary were all discussed in open meetings at the committee level, brought back for consideration and approval. I know that because I was part of that process. And there may have been one other person sitting up here with me right now that was part of that as well, Alderman Langdon, yep. Um, today, we have a recommendation that results from a back office meeting between the mayor and certain aldermen, and it's this circumventing of the process, this lack of transparency that raises red flags, and is the reason that I cannot support this change. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carried on roll call 7-1. Alderman Grady. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like to make a motion for keeping the human resources coordinator position at a grade 15 on the non-representative salary range and increasing the salary by 3% because of the additional responsibilities. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Rapello. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm just a little concerned with the 3% salary increase. Um, it's at grade 15. Um, I would just like to not have the 3% salary increase. I know she could be given the $500 uh, bonus for her extra work for the year. Um, I'd like to see that instead of the 3% go down to a, a 1 or 1.5% pay raise, something like that. Um, I'll shoot for a 1% pay raise. Um, is there a second? So you're making a motion to amend yes. to a 1%? Yes. Okay. Is there a second for the amendment? Second. So motion and a second to amend the motion to increase the salary by 1%. Do we have any discussion? We 
I do some cutting and pasting in to make it pop up on the screen. <laughs> so. Maybe. There it is. Okay, so if we could have a roll call vote on the amendment. Motion fails on roll call two seven. Two six, sorry. Didn't count. So we're still on the original motion. Is there any further discussion on the original motion? Alderman Rapella? Uh Could we make an amendment to a 2% pay raise? If you can get a second. Second. Thank you. Okay. Okay, if we could have a roll call vote on the amendment, please. Motion fails on roll, roll call 2-6. So we're still on the original motion. If we don't have any other discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please, on the original motion. Motion carried on roll call, 5-3. Item J is action items. The first item is the accounts payable and payroll for January 9th through 16th. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move for the to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of January 9th through January 16th, 2020 in the amount of $7,293,428.83. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Oh, was there? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item 2 is the beverage operator's license applications. Is there a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move for to approve the beverage operator's license applications for the 2019 through 2021 licensing period as listed under approved in the clerk's memo dated January 16th, 2020. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Tom Grady. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item L is ordinances and resolutions. The first is ordinance 1. Do we have a motion? Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. I'll move for the approval of Ordinance 1, 2020, an ordinance amending Title 13 by making certain changes to the district. This is at 1530 Oneida Street 
from a B2 Community Business District to C1 General Commercial District, introduced by myself and recommended by the Plan Commission. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carried on roll call eight zero. Item two is the resolution 1-20. Is there a motion? Alderman Grady. Yes, Mayor, thank you. At this time, I'll make the motion for the R1-2020 City of Menasha Comprehensive Outdoor Recreational Plan for the years 2020 through 2024, introduced by Alderman Ted Grady, myself, recommended by the, pub, by the Board of Public, or the Board of Park and Rec Recreational Board, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a motion in a second. We got what you meant. I don't know. <laughs> by the two. There's <laughs> a motion by the, a motion and a second by both Alderman Grady. Any discussion? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. As uh, I had stated before, um, I had some reservations of uh, voting on this. As long as I understand and it, it is a guide and not um, where all of a sudden I have the mayor later on saying to me, well, you voted for the comprehensive plan. I mean, what do you expect from us? You know, I can't, uh, there, there's many things in here I don't necessarily 100% agree with, maybe 99%. So I just want that to be clear. So I will support this this evening, but I wanted to make that point. Alderman Grady. Thank you. Yes, I agree with you, Alderman Zevenick. I, too, you know, look at this as a blueprint or a plan or a, a direction, but, yes, not everything is just going to get rubber stamped as to what this court plan does state. So thank you for your input. Alderman Taylor. I just echo both uh, the uh, conversations here with uh, Alderman Grady and Alderman Zevenick. So I guess I'd like to, since we had this little discussion, we should kind of put forward what this means. This is direction for us as we start putting together the budget in the coming years. Of course, the council approves the budget, so without an approval on the budget, these things won't happen. But these, this will be the guideline for what does appear in the budget in the future. If you're a mayor. Who's <laughs> ever the mayor, it will be. <laughs> Seeing no further discussion, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Motion carried on roll call, 8-0. <laughs> Item M is appointments. There are two this evening. Um, Alderman Grady. Yes, thank you. At this time, I'd like to make the approval for the appointment of Jennifer S. Sasman as financial director, and she obtains her certified public accountant CPA certification in a 2.5 year span from the date of appointment as recommended by the personnel committee. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Sevenick. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Congratulations, Jennifer. <laughs> and I'm not sure if this appointment is a congratulations or a, a sentence, but um, is there a motion for the appointment to the Room Tax Commission as well? <laughs> Alderman Sevenick? I was thinking the same thing, Mayor. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I'm going to agree with the Mayor's appointment of yourself, Jennifer Sassman, to the Room Tax Commission for the term of 120 of 2020 to 531 of 2020. 
There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Is, is that just to fill out the, the term in the meantime? Yes. And then we'll be redoing that in uh, July or something. Sure. Yeah. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item O is public comments on any matter that was listed on the agenda this evening. Does anyone wish to make any comments? No? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.